Hey, hi, welcome everyone to today's latest mix up builds videos that I create for your enjoyment. Today's build I have is one I like to call my Stun Trooper build, and it's one that fully allows you to go all out with a hammer stun setup that practically works amazing against any monster you face, if you want to limit down the movement and chuck in as much damage as you possibly can. Which sounds like some OP mix set I'm trying to sell to you, but it's honestly, it's more down to preference, and how you genuinely feel about it, once you get around playing around with it. But it's definitely one you won't be disappointed with once you try it out, and honestly, it's quite a fun build to try out every once in a while. So with this setup, I wanted to create a build that always focused on stunning a monster repeatedly, by either knocking them out with a hammer, or paralyzing them with a hammer, or both. And then using the raw power weapon hat to deal the finishing blow, and in any case you look at it, this set allows you to pull off that combo successfully, which does make it an interesting build to go with, as it's not common to run this, nor is it metal worthy when you think about it. But interesting and fun nonetheless. Now of course, if I wanted to go with a stun trap build like this, but with more quicker status affliction, then I could have gone with a sword and shield, which has the paralysis element built into it, and then just use my shield bash when I can. But the lack of damage and lack of KOs just don't feel that consistent when compared to using my hammer, which has all the benefits and more that I could ever ask for. So before I go into the build itself, let me talk about the weapon I'm using. The weapon I'm using is the Tower of Hammer Numb, which is a Tower of Kovi Relic weapon, Rarity 7, that can drop in the Siege event after a few runs. It's a Milady Fist Hammer, but much slightly improved on via stats, which it now has 30% affinity instead of 20, 390 paralysis, like its alternative, and can reach white sharpness, like its alternative. Now this is the main go-to weapon for the build, as it's outright amazing for causing the element status build-up to apply, and also allows to carry monsters on the get-go, which leaves a lot of uptime for us and more damage in between. Now the only main difference between the two weapons noticeably is that my one has two augmentation slots, while the other one has three augmentation slots, which depends on what you're building around it. But my version comes out slightly on top, with the extra 10% affinity and a slight bit more damage when ogged, but the latter version has cheaper augmentation requirements, which means you can put on three extra augmentations straight away if you have the parts required. Plus, this is an alternative weapon to go with if you don't have the tower version, as they both generally do the same thing. It just one of them has a slight change in stats. Now sadly I don't have an extra hammer augmentation to go with, so I can't go with standard health augmentation and affinity augmentation for my build, just the health augmentation. But this is something you can go with instead, as health augmentation is always great for any weapon you use, and the extra bit of affinity is nice but not really something to worry about, as you already have a large amount to begin with, but it is an extra 10% of damage. Plus if you did add on to your weapon, it would mean that you would have 40% affinity plus the extra 5% for my attack up boost, and plus for my weakness exploit, it will come down to around 95% affinity, which is quite ridiculously amazingly high for raw damage. But one thing you have to say is that you do have to give props with the weapon, as it does look quite nice for its golden design and polish. But anyways, moving on to the main skills. The skills I went with are ones that apply to making the base damage to build stronger, and allow me to focus on stunning the monster as much as possible, without too much interruption in between so your genre damage build with added stunning capabilities in the mix. So I went with a handicraft 5 max, so I can reach the white sharpness at 4 and get that extra 1.32 damage multiplier, which sounds like I don't need to reach this amount of sharpness, but it increases my uptime and allows me to do less sharpening when needed to. Next I went with attack 4 for that slight boost in attack damage and 5% extra affinity, so overall 35% affinity for the build now. We need exploit 3 for that sweet sweet 50% crit damage when landing on monster's weak points, which you'll be doing a lot of. Slugger 3 for that extra KO2 when wanting to KO monster multiple times in the fight. Focus 2 to do my charge attacks faster, which you're going to be doing for 9% of the fights when you can't do a big ban attack. And lastly, we have Stamina Surge 1, which helps with recovering my stamina slightly quicker. Now overall, this build will give you 35% affinity, which calculates to 85% affinity when you add in the weakness exploit skill when active. 450 defense, so perfect to use against Tempered Monster runs. 972 attack damage, which can be increased even more by just going to the kitchen. 390 paralysis and quite a hefty amount of white sharpness to last you a lifetime, or last you for the entirety of the investigation you're doing. Now I've noticed that a lot of people don't recommend Slugger 3 because of how weak it feels in this game, when compared to all the versions, and personally I feel like it's 50-50 as at best, as when I use it I notice that depending on the ones I face, I can pull off at best 3 KOs in one fight with ease if I focus on the head only. While without it, I can pull off two at max when focus on the head. Maybe three, maybe not. So I'm getting extra care when available. 
which is very debatable to go with, as not all monsters can be killed repeatedly without dying in the process, but it saves me from using the impact mantle all the time, and it still benefits the build as a whole, even though it may or may not give you that extra hit within that time. This is something that you can just go ahead and play around with, but this is something I actually notice is quite usable. Yes, you get that third extra hit, but whether that's something you're worried about or not is entirely up to you. You can still get extra two hits with KOs, but if you really want to go with the full Monty with it, I suggest you go with this one here, just go all out and just get that third extra hit. But that's depending on the monster you face. Now, of course, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty parts of how to play around with this build with a specific playstyle, as it's practically simple to take on and stun a monster with ease with the limited movesets you already have. But I do have a few tips you can go ahead and remember when facing a monster with this set. Firstly, aim for the monster's head as much as you can, as you want to pull off as much KOs as possible before the monster gets a chance to fight back. Do it well enough and you'll KO them, and you may also paralyze them at the same time for that extra damage increase and timing. Secondly, use your big bang only when the monster is down of course, as each hit from the move builds up damage over time for a big damaging finisher. Also make sure you aim for the head for of course the KO effect. Thirdly, use the Rocksteady Mantle to negate raw stun in the beginning of the fight, so you can maximise the damage you do. This is a no brainer that many of you guys already know to do, but for new players this is a viable tactic to up your damage threshold straight away when you start a fight, as no downtime equals quicker and more damage done. And lastly, make use of the ramps and slides around the maps, as you can pull off slight mid-air tumble attack, I, I don't really know what the full name is, that does a large amount of damage and can, and can lead to doing a mount attack, which basically means that if you manage to land a mount onto a monster and you knock them out, well done, you can then go ahead and either KO them or paralyze them, so even more uptime and more destruction on your end. And that's it really, everything else will fall in place as long as you focus on the head and do your standard charge attacks when the space is available. Just remember the tips I give you and you'll be on your way to become an angrier and aggressive version of the Vespoids, but with blunt damage instead of stingers. If you enjoyed the video then I do appreciate a like and a sub as I'm always doing content like this in the future on my channel. But like always, thanks for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.